Bunga. Hello, critics, non critics, and friends. Welcome to the Film Optics Podcast, where we take a glance into blockbusters, indie films, and everything in between. I'm your host, Christian, and as always, I'm joined by my partner in film, Devin. And today, we're going to be giving our spoiler free comments and concerns on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. And before we begin today's episode, You can listen to our podcast on podcast platforms around the internet. That includes Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and more. And if you are a new or seasoned listener to the show, we would love to hear from you guys. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and threads at FilmOptics. Or you can email us at FilmOptics at gmail.com for any movie-related questions. And that is Optics with an X. So, Devin. What's up? How's your weekend been? What what's been going on in your life? It's been a it's been a solid weekend overall. Just kind of hanging out, doing whatever. Saw this 11 a.m. on a Saturday. It's an interesting, interesting screening time to have, but it was fun. Yeah, I, I always say that watching movies early in the morning or in the morning in general is probably one of the best things ever. Because you're awake, you're alert, you know, like, obviously it's, it's early, earlier in the morning, but you know, it's like, it's your entire day isn't built around seeing a movie. You can go see the movie, you know, as early as like 11, maybe 12, you know, around the noon area. And then, and then you're done, you know, like you, you go see a really awesome movie. And especially if, if it's a movie that, you know, you, you've been wanting to see and that, you know. It's, it's, there's really nothing else like it. And then you got the rest of your day ahead of you. You can do whatever you want. You don't have to worry about going to that, uh, that evening or late night showing at, you know, at, at the last minute. So yeah, I was also able to see Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, um, at 11 AM on my side as well. They sent us the invite stuff like super last minute, but I'm glad that I went to that showing. It was really just critics all together. So it, it was, it was a good time, but how's, uh, what if, uh, what if next week people would do a, a teenage mutant talk to me duo at the, at the theaters, that could be the new Bartmanheimer. So TMNT has kind of, you know, snuck its way into the Barbie marketing there for a bit. And there's like a few posters out there where, you know, the turtles are coming out of like a sewage, like manhole and it's like Barbie land. Like, you know, you know, or yeah, is Dreamland. Is that what, what it was called? Barbie Land. I can't really remember from from the movie. But yeah, they, they've snuck their way into a little bit of the marketing there as well. Um, for whatever reason, the whole Oppenheimer and Barbie thing was like amazing. Just a, a complete win for for everyone involved, like a p- complete win for cinema complete win for you know fans alike and a lot of people are actually um (laughs) seeing barbie and oppenheimer back to back and you know the way that you do that Devin, is you go to the theater early (laughs) you spend the whole day you're there for at least five six hours you know space out your viewings there for a bit depending on which one you go for first i have kind of come down to the fact where I tell people, hey, if you're going to do a double feature in one day for Barbie and Oppenheimer, at least go see Oppenheimer as early as you can then take like maybe like an hour break and then go see Barbie. That way you're seeing the longer movie first and you're going to be able to, you know, enjoy it for what it is. And then you can, you know, a nice little palate cleanser with Barbie. So. That's how I, I think. Bar- I think Barbie's the appetizer because Oppenheimer will eat you up. Oppenheimer, well, that, that is true. I, I I don't think there's a wrong way to go about it, but I guess it's de- it depends on what people want to see first. But yeah, but also in a, in a few weeks or a, few, a couple months, I think we're gonna have Saw Patrol as the next combo. Saw oh. and Paw Patrol. <laughs> I'm not Same gonna lie. Day. I saw the Paw Patrol um, poster walking out of my TMNT 
um, critic screening, and it looked fire. Just the poster itself looked really awesome. And apparently the first Paw Patrol movie is, like, really good from what I've heard. Um, I will not be seeing Saw <laughs> at all. But, yeah, that was, um, it was, it was pretty cool. But I don't know. Maybe people will see Saw Patrol, you know, the, 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 the duality of cinema coming up yet again. Or, I don't know, maybe not. I, I feel like, for whatever reason, it just really worked out in Barbie and Oppenheimer's favor where this i don't even know who came up with the word barbenheimer to be completely honest with you (laughs) just (laughs) works yeah it just works it just came out of the internet out of nowhere and you start seeing these t-shirts popping up but i'm glad you've had a great weekend i've had a fun weekend too went out with some friends last night for a bit uh but outside of that didn't do too much actually forgot to mention that i went to the ed sheeran concert last weekend he came down to good old Music City, and it was phenomenal. Um, outside of that, yeah, still um, battling <laughs> with Insomniac uh, for these plates. Oh my god, they 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 really. So I I learned that they actually um, they actually released the plates or released pre orders ten minutes earlier than they said they were going to, and I think. That makes a lot more sense. So there's like a lot of articles about it right now. So yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. But yeah, outside of that whole controversy with Insomniac, I actually finished Star Wars Rebels, which is really, really awesome. I finally finished like, I had like four episodes left to go and I finally finished it. It was quite possibly some of the best Star Wars I've ever seen. Like, I'm not even joking. Like it's, it's really good. But it gets it gets me more pumped for Ahsoka, like the series that's coming out. So I'm very, very excited for that all together. But as we mentioned here before, we're going to be giving our spoiler free thoughts for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. This drops on August 2nd, 2023. So we were able to see it a few days early, as we mentioned earlier. And I'd like to thank Paramount for setting that up for us and all the other critics were able to see the film. So it's dropping on a Wednesday. That's interesting. Yeah. So Paramount's been doing this weird thing, uh, dropping movies on a Wednesday because the new Mission Impossible movie also dropped on a Wednesday. It dropped on like a July 12th or yeah, it was ju- July 12th. So I don't know why they are starting to do that. I'm not sure if it's a coincidence is for two of these movies for TMNT and for Mission Impossible, but yeah, it's it's kind of weird. But hey, I mean I I guess that's a good time as any. I would just I don't think anything else is coming out this coming weekend, like the first uh weekend of August. Do you know? Um I know this upcoming week is the Meg 2. Should be interesting. Oh, actually, I have the list right here. Hold on one second. So Friday, August 4th, um, at least from what I've seen right now, um, according to our Ally Global listing, uh, in theaters only, this is in theater only films, not counting streaming movies, you have The Meg 2, like Devin just mentioned, and Shortcomings. And that's it. That, that's literally it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles would have done fine against both of those films. But I guess they just wanted to kind of, you know, get out there a little bit earlier. I don't know. But without further delay, we're going to get into our review here. So we'll be right back after this introduction to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. Love it. Love it. Stay still. Come on. Stay Come still. On. Hey, hold on. No, no, no. Oh. Let's try that again, but with Ninja Stars. <gasps> hey, why do we pick a fruit shaped exactly like my head? Just stop talking. You're ruining my concentration. You're fine. Chill. He's gonna die. Yeah. Ah. Ah. Did you hear that? What was that? Well, not that we can do. You guys wanna grab pizza? Can I kick it? Can I kick it? Can I kick it? Can I kick it? What the heck are those things? They look like little Shreks to me. Oh, we've prepared our whole lives for this. 
Leo, what happened? Oh Is Donnie it's bleeding? It was an accident. Mike, you watch out! So, you were baby turtles who made contact with mystery goo. Well, we prefer the term ooze, but yeah. It's like more like, it's just nicer. It, it, it so. rolls it's off the tongue cool. better, yeah. Ooze. Ooze. It's ooze. nice, right? Ooze. It's ooze. ooze. And we are back with our Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem review. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I got it that time. You didn't hear the other outtake because that was <laughs> that was what well, that was cut out. The, the magic of podcasting. But this film is directed by Jeff Rowe and the writers include Seth Rogen, Evan Goldberg, Jeff Rowe, Dan Hernandez and Benji Samet. And stars Micah Abbey, Shaman Brown Jr., Hannibal Burgess, Rose Brine, Nicholas Cantu, John Cena, Jackie Chan, and so much more. And Ice Cube is in this movie as well. This is like a stack cast. And I believe Seth Rogen also, yeah, voices, um, uh, has a voice in this as well. And Post Malone and Giancarlo Esposito. This is a huge list. I absolutely love this this cast. Like it's it's insane. And when it comes to animation and cinema for at least 2023, I think we've definitely been hitting on like every single point. Like every single animated movie that I've gone to see um on my ends has been like really really good. It's it's a great year for animation for for movies all together, but I am going to pass it over to Devin so we can give his spoiler free thoughts. As we mentioned before, this is spoiler free. We're not going to be giving away any details whatsoever, but Paramount has already announced that they will be making a sequel. So that is like official news. And um, I believe they will be making a spinoff series of this as well, but I'm going to pass it over to Devin so he can give his initial reactions to teenage mutant, Ninja Turtles, Mutant Mayhem. Yeah, going into this one, uh, this movie has a lot going for it. Like, if you just look at the people behind the camera, you get Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg doing the writing. And I continue to, to be a part of the the contingent that believes Seth Rogen has not missed and has, has just never missed. Like, everything he touches turns into gold. You got Invincible, The Boys, all his own movies. Like, this man just doesn't miss. And, and when he's when he's on the writing team, you know it's a good sign. But also, if you dig a little deeper, the directors Jeff Rowe and Kyle, Kyler Spears, they are both on Mitchell and the Machines, one of the best Mitchell's versus the Machines, I should say, one of the best animated movies we've seen in recent years. So it makes sense why why this one ends up working out so well because this movie is a it's a blast from beginning to end. Like. This animation style is something that I don't think anyone's ever seen before because from what I've heard, they tried to base it off of what a kid would actually draw for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Like That's how they tried to make the animation look, and it looks so unique, and it just flows and, and runs so smoothly. So animation's amazing. The cast is amazing, like you mentioned. Everyone in this cast does a great job. The story is really, really fun. Like It's an origin story for the, for the turtles, which I feel like we haven't had... An, um, too many of in, in Hollywood. Um, obviously, there have been a lot of attempts to make a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. I think Michael Bay was probably the last one. I think I skipped that one because they, cause they look so strange. They were so bad. <laughs> they were yeah. so bad. Sorry, go ahead. I definitely remember the one from uh, 1990. I remember watching that one when I was a kid. And that one is also interesting because they just look so strange. <laughs> like... <laughs> I don't, I don't understand <laughs> how they look this strange. I, that's why I feel like animated is probably the best way to go for this because, like, how are you going to make a lifelike turtle? It just just doesn't really work. Um, but it definitely works in animated, which is why I'm glad they went that route. I'm also glad they went with, like, a, an actual child cast for the core for Ninja Turtles instead of trying to make adults do the voices or... 
mm-hmm. or, or aging them up because this is an origin story. This is them from the very beginning, and they actually sound like they're teenage, which is a big part of it. Sometimes, a lot of the times, we, we get some some adult mutant ninja turtles. It's, I've never heard of AMNT, <laughs> so I'm glad we got some accuracy there. Hey. It's in the name. It's in the name. Exactly. <laughs> got to gotta keep it accurate. I was actually looking at the at the four the four turtle voices. I, I recognize Brady Noon because he was in um he was in Good Boys as Thor, if you recall. Oh, was he? Oh, I remember Thor. Yes. Yep. Oh, How could boy. you forget? That was a great movie. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. Well, yeah, um, my initial reactions kind of line up with Devin's, of course. Like, I'm I'm a big Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fan. You know, when it comes to the, the theater side, they haven't had the best luck. You know, they've, um, you know, Nickelodeon, or I should say Paramount. Well, this is like a Nickelodeon movie, uh, technically. But um, I kind of wrote up my little initial reactions after I saw the film. So I guess starting off for my initial reactions... I think that this movie was an absolute blast and it offered a fresh and more realistic perspective on the Teenage Turtles that we all love and combining that with like a fantastic soundtrack, which, by the way, I looked up uh, Seth Rogen compared the film's soundtrack to that of Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1999, which I think is definitely on point. Definitely get that vibe. Yeah, pretty some grungy moments, but then also a lot of nineties, nineties hip hop, which is always a good, always a good thing to have in a movie. This, this and the latest transformers, great soundtracks. I know it's great. I mean, teenage mutant Ninja turtles or TMNT, you know, it's, it is a very nineties thing. Like obviously like they've been around since like the eighties or at least the, the, the uh, TV show has, cause you know, they, they are originated from like comics and whatnot, but like I said, the the combination of the soundtrack and the stunning visuals, you know, it's not it's not Spider Verse, it's Spider Verse esque, but it definitely this animation style has like its own um, its own like signature to it. It almost reminded me of like claymation stop animation, almost, but not necessarily. But it's a it's an interesting blend. And it, it definitely works for for this film. And of course, you know, the engaging story made it uh, a joy to watch. It is, uh, you know, you could call it like an, uh, an origin story. I would say more of like an introduction story um, nowadays, you know, because it's like, obviously they, you know, the, you know, the turtles, they've been training their whole lives, but this is more of like the, the call to action. So yeah, you could call it origin introduction. I don't think there's a, there's a wrong way to, um, to phrase it, but it it is a fun coming of age story for the heroes in a half shell, um, that everyone can enjoy. You know, this movie is around like an hour and 40 minutes and it, it was it's perfect. Like I went to my critic screening, like almost every there was actually two screenings going on at once. There was one for critics and then there was one like an early pre, or like an early screening for fans. And yeah, so that's how it was for us too. we had two separate theaters for the screenings that were going on. Yeah. So it, it was man, the, the uh, I guess you can say like the fan screening. So many kids, so many like. TMNT adults, you know. Yeah, just some of the, some general. of the kids in our screening had like uh, some Ninja Turtle headbands. I wanted to know where they got those from. Those are pretty. Yeah, cool. I was like, "Give me a headband, man! Like, what's up? What's up? What's <laughs> up? What's up?" <laughs> I've been watching way too much community. I'm sorry. <laughs> but um, I think the standout all outside of the turtles, you know, them being voiced by teenagers makes it feel so real and it's you know it's we've seen so many different versions of the turtles like throughout the years and they just keep seeming to like recycle them over and over but not saying that most of them haven't worked because you know most of them have some of them haven't obviously the live action they they just they don't need to do that anymore i don't think that every like animated you know, property needs a live action counterpart because that's how you get like these subpar movies. Like those, the, the two live action TMNT movies were just horrid, 
Like the the turtles just looked so weird. It's like I don't. I'm actually. Really I was actually looking at one. There's also another. I think it's, it looks like it's animated, but from 2007, a movie called TMNT. This looks really bad. Is 2007? You said. Yeah. The cast is stacked, but like this animation, oh my god! It's like those, it's like those movies that it's like kick, kick punch panda, where it's like they just rip off Kung Fu Panda. That's what it looks like. The quality. It's it's is it the one with Mike? He's like on the skateboard, like in the forefront, kind of, sort of. I think. I, yeah, yeah, I remember this one. Um, I don't know if I like this one or not. But it's like CG animated, right? Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, I don't. I can't remember if I do remember seeing this movie, but I can't remember. In the, I think they made like a video game or whatever. I, no, it was something weird. But it's, it's crazy. We really, really haven't gotten a, a, a really good adaptation. Like the TV shows were, were always pretty good, but. As far as yeah. the movie goes, we really have not gotten anything. No, no, we we have we really have not. Um, in recent memory, um, at least, I I cannot remember the last time we got like a really good movie. I think it was. Do you remember like the two thousand three um, show? I think they did a movie for that, and I know there's been other movies based off of like the current like TV shows or the uh, the more recent TV shows. Um, I know they've done like kind of like a TV movie type thing, but when it comes to live action, it's just they they, they don't need to do that again. <laughs> yeah. Like absolutely not. But I I would say overall, there's been a lot more good than bad for the TMNT franchise when it comes to like just different uh, adaptations but this one's definitely up there with like ranking one of the best of course jackie chan haven't seen him we haven't seen him in so long his performance as master splinter was like top notch and i i truly believe like this is one of the best blockbusters of 2023 like i i had so much fun with this like this is in like my top five movies of the year so far like it's it's amazing. Like, I mean, I can't say like I can't really compare it to Spider Verse because that is the second movie. That, that's the in, peak. Yeah, that, that that's the peak, and also you know that, that is the second movie in the trilogy. Obviously, this is a new possible trilogy coming through because, like I said, we we are getting a, a sequel, um, and there is a post credit scene for this uh, film as well. So definitely, you know, keep out for that. But it was just so much fun to see these turtles just they were just bros like yeah like you, like the bros back in like the 80s 90s like oh bro you know like whatever whatever but like these were like modern teenagers you know that you would run into the b- bump into the street you know in the year 2023 and like th- this is how teenagers would act but obviously they are you know these turtles are being sheltered by master splinter and you know, he doesn't want them. He does. He doesn't think the world's going to accept them because of what happened to him and whatnot. So you get a lot of the uh, the backstory for Master Splinter as well. And I I, <laughs> I love the cheeky dialogue. Like it was so it was it was so well written as well. But I wanted to get your thoughts, Devin, on on the villain. I know I've been talking here for a while, but like, what did you think about that whole you know kind of like a two villain type thing? going on like we've seen that in some movies but i wanted to pick your brain about that for a bit yeah i thought ice cube as superfly was great just hearing that voice and then he kept dropping his his like his lines from his songs into the movie and it was so well done (laughs) super cool to see that and then there was also the maya rudolph character which is kind of just like the overarching like evil ceo type villain that we've been seeing a lot so that's that's just always going to be there but yeah, and then uh, we've got a tease at the end of another villain, and there's going to be some more movies. It's, it's good. To, I was also going to ask, which is your favorite turtle? Because that's I was going to ask you that. It's a very important <laughs> question. I was going to ask you that, Devin. This is is so tough. Like when I was younger, it was Leonardo, hands down. You know, he was the leader. Um, I know in recent TV shows, they've kind of started to change to where Raph uh, or Raphael is 
the uh, is the leader of the bunch. But I mean, my gosh, from from this from this movie, it's probably Mikey. But Donatello is so funny in this movie as well, and I feel like he's severely underrated when it comes to the four turtles. I feel like Donnie is definitely the the most underrated, but. I loved Mikey in this movie. And I also adore that they didn't make uh, Raphael a just like a meathead. Like, yeah, like he has anger issues. He wants to fight. You know, he's, he's headstrong. He's very stubborn. But I'm glad that they didn't make him like I didn't. I'm glad they didn't dumb him down, if that makes any sense. And also, I'm not sure if you noticed, but his mask um it's the his like red band is the only one to like cover his entire head. The rest yeah. of them just have yeah, which is which is nice because you know like obviously what when you come back to like the I think it was like the eighties cartoon where they're all just the same turtle, but you know they they have their own color head headband. But within recent years, we've started to see more uh, physical differences from them. Because uh, Mikey is actually like a darker green from his um, from his other three brothers, probably just to match like the color shading with like the orange. But yeah, well, who's your favorite turtle? Like, I guess who's your favorite turtle in general, and who's your favorite turtle from this film? Well, yeah, I think I think there is a correct answer, and I think the correct answer is Michelangelo because he's just he's the one. Like, you gotta love Mikey. You gotta gotta respect. Yeah. Him. You gotta respect Michelangelo, but at least from this movie, I think Raphael definitely um, <laughs> definitely a fan of him. You always gotta always gotta love the the big bruiser who can take care of, take care of the physical end of things and and get things done. But also, what did you think of this April O'Neil we got? I was gonna ask you that as well. Um, so, and I know there's always like the craziest controversy when it comes to. April, especially within this movie, and I know people are going to just completely review bomb it for it because they, they can't handle April O'Neil being uh, a different color or a different race other than whites. But I I liked her character because she felt more realistic. Like obviously she is in high school. She is aspiring to become like a writer. She wants to be a journalist. But, you know, she has her own problems. But and like she she looks like an actual teenager. Like, you know, she doesn't look like who was it? Who was uh, April O'Neil in the live action Michael Bay TMNT movie? Wasn't was it Michael? It? Wasn't Megan Fox? Mega, <laughs> Michael Fox. <laughs> Michael Fox. <laughs> Michael, Michael J. Fox. J. Fox. <laughs> yes, that was him. Uh, but yeah, uh, yeah, it was. Um, yeah, it was Megan Fox, which, you know, there's no I'm not knocking her, but it's you know, we've seen. There's so many different versions of the turtles, which means we get so many different versions of Master Splinter, which in this movie, you know, he's more of in, you know, a, a dad. You know, he can still kick butt, but he's he's a dad. But for I, Abel's I loved, character, I loved when he uh when he sprung into action and kicked everyone's yeah. butt. I know. And he did not use any guns because Jackie Chan doesn't like using guns. He he's is Jackie Chan Batman. <laughs> He could be. <laughs> he could be Batman. Jackie Chan could definitely be Batman. But to get back to your question, yeah, for, for April, I, I thought she was done beautifully. You know, Leonardo's always had like a crush on April, but it's it's a more realistic take. Um, again, for for a new age of turtle fans altogether. Um, but what what about you? What, what did you think of April? I, I love I love April. I, I thought it was a really good voice acting job, and I think it's a sign for you and everyone else out there to watch The Bear because Io Edebiri is in The Bear. It's possibly the best show we got going right now. Whoa, whoa, Devin, that that's a tall order. That that is some high that's praise just, for a TV it's a call, show. A call to order right now. <laughs> I'm definitely going to watch it. A call to action. Yes. I'm I'm definitely going to watch it. I'm in the middle of watching the rest of uh Drag The Dragon Prince season 5 that dropped on Netflix cuz that's like that's my show. But I I am going to check out The Bear. How long are each episode? I hear they're only around like 30 minutes, but I wanted to confirm with a a a fan of the show. Yeah, they're around 30 to 40, but there is actually one episode in the second season that's like an hour and a half. It's like a movie, oh. and it's amazing. Oh. So we're, we're getting like another uh, Bill and Frank type episode. 
is, is what you're saying. Actually, I mean, it is kind of up there. Oh, okay. Okay. I'll, I'll definitely have to check it out. I've, I've been trying to catch up on so many things lately. It's, it's insane, but I, I agree. Um, when it comes to April and the I thought she was fantastic. Just a very realistic, um, looking girl. And just, you know, it's, it's just another version of April. I don't think that people should be knocking her for, you know, her appearance. And it's like, well, technically April, like in the comics, originally she was like, she was more black or like mixed race. She wasn't necessarily white, but you know, that's a whole nother can of worms. But April O'Neil was awesome. Definitely check out the bear. Like Devin just said, I need to check it out myself. But I, gosh, I just love this movie. Like, I want to go see it again. And I think there's another early screening tomorrow. Like, I want to go see it again. <laughs> like, I rarely watch movies twice. But when I do, that's when I know that it's, like, really good. Like, of course, I watched Spider-Verse twice. I wasn't going to go see it three times. But this is a movie where you can just, you can watch it again because it isn't long. I think the pacing is perfect. I think it gets the message across, um, in, in a very just straightforward way. Yeah, it's a quick hour 40. Yeah, like it's not, it's, I mean, you can say it's surface level. But like, again, like it's a kid's movie. It's not going to be super, super deep. But it, it does a great job of setting up the turtles for, you know, a new uh, movie, hopefully, maybe even a trilogy, because I can definitely see that happening, you know, if, if everyone comes back. The only thing I'm worried about is I wonder, you know, obviously kids grow up so fast. Um, do you think with the second movie or the sequel, do you think there's going to be some time past where they are like older teenagers? Because given by the kids who voice them in this movie, you know, they're not going to have those super high squeaky voices the entire time. You know, we saw that with, we've seen it with so many other franchises like Stranger Things, Harry Potter, things of that nature where kids just grow up so fast. But uh, do, do you think there's going to be like a time lapse between um, this movie and the sequel? I think they're they're definitely moving pretty fast because they know what they have here. They like a, like we said, they've already announced a sequel and a series leading into that sequel. So I think they're definitely moving moving fast. Oh, okay, okay. So it's a series leading into the sequel, not the sequel. Yeah, that's what I saw. The series. Okay, interesting. And I'm not going to lie, I, I thought it was a bit premature to kind of, you know, announce that uh, prior. But now that I've seen the movie and the post credit scenes, um, yeah, it definitely makes sense. Like, it's this this is going to do so well. Like, I mean, it's like like we've said, you know, animated and especially kids movies, just they just end I mean, up It's, it's so great well. for kids, but it's also great for the adults that grew up on this because, like we said, it's got the 90s hip hop aesthetic. It's got... It's got the turtles in it. Like mm. it's got a lot of references for the adults too. Yeah. Th- this, this movie outside of Spider-Man, I would say this is like the every man's movie this year because it is so relatable. You know, the turtles have such a huge fan base spanning back to like the early nineties and you know, now it's 2023. So like there's, there's turtle fans everywhere, which I, I think is uh, a beautiful thing that everyone can kind of just come together and enjoy just a good old fashioned, you know, TMNT movie. Finally, like another animated one. Cause when I first saw the trailer for this, I was like, Oh, what? I'm like, Oh, this is TMNT. I'm like, Oh, and then like the, the trailer, like the first trailer is just so perfect where it just shows like the turtles being teenagers and just having fun and, you know, messing up in every turn, but, you know, coming to the realization towards the end that, you know, they don't have to hide from society and that they can actually help them and kind of, you know, become heroes in their own way and find their own calling. But I wanted to pass it over to you, Devin. I do apologize. Is there anything else you wanted to mention that we haven't had a chance to talk about yet before we get into our final thoughts and our ratings? Yeah, the only real issues I had with this one, um, obviously the turtles, they're known for all the pop culture references. Like that's kind of their thing. But I do think there were there were quite a bit in this one. Like possibly a bit too many. Like there's just so many random references. Like at one point he mentions playing Forza Horizon a lot. That's why he can drive. It's like yeah. that's just that's just so random. 
And then there's like a, there's a, they made references to like Marvel or um, <laughs> Avengers Endgame and Mark Ruffalo over and over again. Yeah. And, and that scene in the diner. There, there were a lot, maybe, maybe too many, but it wasn't too big of a deal. But there also, there were a lot of like really good needle drops in this one. We keep mentioning mm-hmm. the music because the soundtrack was so good. I kind of wish there were a little bit more of those. Like in, in certain moments in the movie, it felt like a needle drop was needed, but then it didn't really come. Especially like the climax at the end. It felt like they went with a soundtrack instead of, they went with the score instead of like a really cool needle drop. Uh, yeah, and I haven't had a chance to listen to the score yet on Spotify, but you actually bring up a really good point um, that I wanted to touch on here for a second before we uh, close out here. The um, you know, the references, like, I mean, I, I love that Donnie is a Attack on Titan fan. He's a big anime fan. We know he's a nerd. You know, we know he's like the, the tech turtle. But I will say, and I've I've read some pieces about this and I've heard this from others. Um, it was actually a few years back where putting to like, it's like, obviously like right now it fits, you know, the references fit because, you know, we're in the time that, you know, it's coming out, but will those references be evergreen where it's yeah, like the issue? Yeah. Well, these references, you know, the pop culture references, obviously Shrek is fine. Cause that's been out for, Ever. There's a lot of Shrek references um, within this movie, but when it comes to like Forza Horizon, you know, when this mo- like just say heck, like five, six, like five to ten years down the road, or you know, like wh- whenever like you show this like to your kids, is that like are they even gonna know what that, or are they even gonna know what, like what Forza Horizon is? But it's not a bad thing. It's just. It's always a gamble because you don't know if that certain pop culture thing is still going to be relevant years down the line. It was a great line and it makes sense because if it wasn't Forza, they probably would have said Gran Turismo. But I feel like a better I feel like a better reference probably would have been Mario Kart. Or like Crash Team Racing, something of that nature, because Mario Kart's been around forever. That is, as of right now, like evergreen. Like I think Mario Kart would have been a better reference because I don't know if a lot of kids know what Forza Horizon is. But yeah, that's it, it's such a small nitpick. It's just my two cents on that. But yeah, when it comes, especially like Attack on Titan. That that might be more evergreen than for than Forza because like it's a like it's a TV show and it's it's um it's rated like one of the best animes like ever adapted for for you know for television outside of like the manga, but yeah th- that's a really good point that that you brought up. But outside of that, yeah, I didn't think that it was too much. It's not something I really noticed in my first viewing. I definitely want to go back and see it. Um, but that, that's a good point that you brought up. I just wanted to kind of touch on that just a little bit, but was there anything else you wanted to mention, um, before we close out here for today? Yeah, I think that pretty much covers it. As far as the score goes, I'd probably go with like an 86, like super solid, a great intro, a great, great start to this, to this, uh, franchise, I guess you can say, because we've got the sequel and the series coming and I'm excited to watch those as well. Yeah, I I am now I I actually am and like honestly I am I have like I'm like turtle on the brain like if if you have Xbox Game Pass like right now or if you just want to like straight up buy it you can buy the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, Shredder's Revenge game it's kind of like a side scroller beat 'em up it takes like three four hours to beat it's yeah I was gonna say big. I actually played it too and it was, it was a fun time not my favorite type of game but yeah it was fun and super short. It's like old school ar- arcade, which I mean, it fits with the turtles, obviously. But I definitely want to check it out um, on Game Pass uh, for sure. I think I was trying to see if there was like a sale that was going to go on, but we'll see. I don't really know, but if anything, I'll just play it on Game Pass and um, you know have have my uh, my teenage uh, Ninja Turtle fix <laughs> there for a bit. But yeah, also you know if 
for other people who are looking for like other recommendations for like other, you know, if, if this wasn't like enough turtle in your life, um, if you go on Paramount plus literally like everything TMNT is like there, like all the TV shows, all of the movies, like it's, it's all owned by Paramount. So that makes sense that they would be there. And of course, you know, um, TMNT is a Nickelodeon property. So that's just something I wanted to kind of throw out there. Some other turtle recommendations, some half shell turtle recommendations. So Devin gave this a 89 out of a hundred. I'm going to go with, let's see on letterbox. I gave it a four and a half stars. So I'm, I'm going to give it like a 94 because it's exactly what a, a movie needs to be of this caliber. It doesn't need to be super long. I can definitely see the movie being maybe around the same length, possibly a little bit longer, but if they kept it around the same, I, I could see it going to like, maybe like a two hour mark, but I, I don't see them going anything farther than that. And even the loose threads in this movie um, that are, that are here, like it's they're there because they're left on purpose because it ties in or, you know, it's left to be up for open interpretation to set up for the next movie. And like I said, there is a post credit scene. So definitely go check out or, you know, stick around after the initial credits. There's only one post credit scene. I guess you can call it a make credit scene because there's like the cool, you know, there's the original uh, credits and then it goes to the, to the um the um the scene and then they do like you know all the other the the whole entire cast and crew and everyone who worked on the film, but I digress. There's a lot of turtle content out there for everyone to enjoy. So, as we're getting back to our ratings, Devin gave it an 89 out of 100. I'm giving it a 94 out of 100. So the official podcast score is going to be the median between. Both of our scores, which is a 91.5 out of 100 for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. <laughs> I just love saying that. I don't know why. But Cowabunga. With, cowabunga. <laughs> so, you guys want to go get some pizza or? <laughs> I, I definitely wanted I definitely wanted some pizza afterwards. Did did you see the the TMNT controllers that Xbox is pumping out? Yeah, that are <laughs> pizza scented. Yeah, like I guess it's, it's apparently you can take off the pizza scent if you want to, but it's supposed it, it takes like four batteries to like power to power because you know you're also playing using it while you're playing, and there's it comes with like this oil scented like pizza. Like oil, it's so funny how like, like literally. I think it's it's either IGN or Gamespot. Someone has like a video where it's like breaking it down of like how it actually works and how you like refill this. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing in the world, man. Like I just I could do it. Like I would definitely love to own that controller, but thankfully. Like I said, you can take off the piece of center part and just use it as an actual controller. <laughs> but it's so funny. It reminds me of w- what Xbox did with the um, the grease free um, controller for PUBG. Do you remember that? Yeah. I was like, th- this is giving me those kind of flashbacks. <laughs> but yeah, everyone's like, why are they doing this? I'm like, well, luckily it's that's it's a limited thing that they're doing. They're only sending it out to like influencers and i think they're doing like it's like a giveaway um type of thing but (laughs) i digress i just had to get that out of my system i thought that was really funny and that concludes today's episode if you enjoy what you heard on today's episode make sure to subscribe to our podcast on your preferred podcast platform of choice make sure to follow us on twitter instagram and threads at Film Optics, that is Optics with an X. And don't forget to share an episode of our podcast with a fellow movie lover. Whether it's your mother, brother, or your significant other, spread the love for the Film Optics podcast with a movie lover in need. And now let's take a glimpse of what's coming up next on the show, uh, which is actually kind of more, um, not dry, but August is a weird month. Cause I don't feel like a lot of things aren't coming out till like September, October, 
But I believe we are going to be covering the last voyage of the Demeter, which is kind of like a horror vampire movie, which is going to be pretty cool. And outside of that, I don't think, are we covering Gran Turismo, Devin? <laughs> are we covering it? I I don't want to, but I guess it I mean, depends on... There's Blue Beetle, there's Strays. Is that, wait, is Blue Beetle, is that in August? Yeah, August 18th. Oh my gosh, you're right. Wow. I am, I do apologize. Um, yeah, so we do have Blue Beetle. Uh, we're going to be covering that in the month of August. Uh, you said Strays? What is, is that? That's is that the, that? Rated, the rated R dog movie with Will Ferrell. And I got gotcha. you. Okay. Disney Fox. That's what I thought. Yeah. So we'll definitely be covering a few of those here and there. Um, I never saw the first Meg movie, so I'm not really like, I'm not really running to the theater to go see that. But oh, awesome! Also, Bottoms that comes out uh, the weekend of Friday, August 25th. So we'll definitely have to uh, cover that as well. That one looks like a really good comedy as, uh, as well. But. As far as new review releases, you can listen to our Secret Invasion episode 336 spoiler review, as well as our Justice League War World, I always mess that up, War World, Blu-ray breakdown, as well as our Barbenheimer review, twice the excitement, twice the thrills, we cover Barbie and Oppenheimer in one fabulous episode and you can also listen to my thoughts on the last of us 4k blu-ray breakdown as well and again thank you all for listening if you enjoy the show please take a moment to leave us a five-star rating and review on apple Podcasts and spotify and stay connected with us by following us on twitter instagram and threads for the latest updates that was Devin, and my name is christian signing off and remember life is like a movie so go out there and make it a blockbuster Peace.